Hello. So today we're going to talk about how to make a multi-part table of contents entry where each of the parts in the book itself or in the document itself has a different look and feel to it. So this is just a mock-up of a book, but you could do this for reports or whatever else you want. So I just threw a random title on here. I have my table of contents to show that I've got entries in here that are on a single line, but you will see in the next area that they are actually on a multi-line, that you've got one line and then the next line. If you didn't see my other video on how to do this, all you have to do is here, we'll pull this out. So that's normally how you would see it on one line. And then instead of, if you hit enter, then it would make two different lines in the table of contents and in your navigation, which is what you don't want. So what you do is hold down the shift button and hit enter, and that puts in the soft return. See, so it has a different symbol in it, and that will let the visual have two lines, one after another, but in terms of the navigation pane and in terms of the table of contents, they're all on one line. So that's a brief summary. I have a whole different video that goes into that in detail if you don't know how to do that part, but let's assume that you know how to do that part of it and create two rows, we'll call them, <laughs> in your heading one field, but you want them to look different. Like I've got this one that says chapter one without italics and then enter the dragon with italics. So the question is how we do that. So both of those things are heading one categories. This one here is the normal heading one tag, which is up there. And what I did is I made a new heading one tag that has a different style setting. So the way I did that is up in the styles area, I clicked in the little expanding button to show all of these settings for styles. Here's the various settings for styles. And then one of the buttons in here is the little A plus, which is to make a new style. So we have the heading one and I had made a heading one italic. So I'm going to show you how I did this. So we got the heading one, which is the default one that you can go in and you know edit and make it to have different fonts or different sizes or whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to hit the little A plus to make a new style. It says what you want to call this. We'll call this one heading one green. So the thing that will be different about this one will be green. I'm going to change the style type to character so that it is just affecting the characters that I select in this style type instead of the entire paragraph because this is actually, you know, depending on how you think about word, this could be considered one paragraph because you have two lines and then it goes down to a paragraph mark. So I just like doing it character to try to keep this as simple as possible. And I want the style based on the heading one style, heading one care, because I want this to still be considered a heading one so that it shows up in my navigation pane and in my table of contents. And I'm going to define this thing as being green. So we get heading one green. It's a character type of style, so it affects the characters that I select. And it's got a, the heading one um, basis so that it is also considered a heading one. And it's already checked to add it to the styles gallery so I can get to this easy. So I will click OK. Now I actually didn't want this one to be heading one green. I was thinking it was going to be the subset. So we're going to make that top part be the regular heading one. We're going to make this bottom part be our new heading one green. So we got chapter two. Let's see if we go back up to chapter one. We select this bottom one and we say we want this to be heading one green. So now we got chapter two heading one, chapter one, which is heading one with the second part of it being heading one green. It still shows up here just as one line, chapter one, enter the dragon. We've got chapter two, kiss the dragon. So again, this is regular heading one for this top row. And then the next row is the heading one green, which has the kiss the dragon part. And if we go up here and regenerate our table of contents, you can see that we've got the two rows. They are still showing up correctly the way that I want them to have one row for chapter one, enter the dragon, one row for chapter two, kiss the dragon. Same thing in the navigation pane, chapter one, enter the dragon, chapter two, kiss the dragon. But then when we come down and look at the actual book layout, it's going to have, you know, maybe you make the top one bigger and the next one smaller, the next one italics or whatever it is that you want to do. So they are both 
part of the Heading 1 category. The first one is the main Heading 1 entry, and then the second one is a, uh, we'll say, call it a child entry that's based on Heading 1, but is now has the difference that it is green. So let me know if you have any questions about making a main Heading 1 entry and then making a subheading 1 entry that has whatever different formatting you want to have on it. And then again, to make the break between the two, I mean, you could just well, you pull out this break. They could be on one line and be a heading one, but we're going to do the shift enter to put it on two lines just because uh, that's the formatting that we were going for in this particular example. So let me know if you have any questions.